Hi, I'm Dr. Paul McGraw. I'm a veterinarian, and I'm here to talk to you about COVID-19 today. You might wonder, why would a veterinary epidemiologist want to talk to you about COVID-19? Well, I've got some unique experiences. I spent 16 years in practice, primarily doing herd medicine, population medicine, if you will. I also spent 14 years with the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection. In that role, I was working as the assistant state veterinarian and the state veterinarian. Through those years, I worked closely with public health on numerous disease outbreaks, uh, many of them animal diseases, many of them affected people. I was there for H1N1, influenza, when that struck in 09 and 10. I was on the task force. I was on the emergency response committees. I worked closely with public health and all of our discussions on what we should do for that virus as it became a pandemic across the world. I was there for H5N1 avian influenza, hantavirus in mice that infected some people. Tuberculosis was a regular disease that we worked closely with public health with and several other diseases. Now in the last two years, I've been the general manager of the doctor's office. The doctor's office is a facility. We have three locations actually, Brookfield, Janesville, and Darien, Wisconsin. We provide a place for doctors to practice without the influence of insurance companies or large healthcare employers. So I've been closely tuned into the medical field in the last two years and what's going on throughout the state and in our clinics. I'm here today to talk about COVID-19 as an experienced epidemiologist. I wanna to talk to you about some of the facts, some of the data, maybe some of the things that haven't been clear. Maybe there's things that have been possibly misrepresented or certainly misunderstood as they've been prevent, presented. And I think it's important that we have multiple perspectives looking at this virus and this disease and the response and, and the outbreak going forward. One of my concerns, one of my major questions has been, what is different about COVID-19 that required the kind of reaction that we did from a public health standpoint, issuing the Safer at Home order in Wisconsin and taking some of these actions? I was with the state during H1N1 in 09 and 010. Public health had similar concerns about that virus. It was a novel influenza virus. It had not been seen before. It rapidly spread across the United States and the world became a pandemic, lots of infections, lots of deaths, but there was never any discussion about issuing orders or closing schools or closing businesses or asking people to stay home. And so I've often wondered, what is different about COVID-19? What do we know about this virus that has led us to take these kind of actions? I wanna to talk to you about four different things today involving COVID-19 and the response to this virus. The discussion of flattening the curve and why public health wanted to flatten the curve. I wanna talk about the death rate and how our public health officials have been using that number. I wanna talk about the models that they've been using to develop the response. And then I wanna talk about whether or not safer at home really is working. So one example of my concerns is we've heard a lot of discussion from public health officials about the need to flatten the curve. Now, when they talk about flattening the curve, the sole purpose of doing that was to save lives. And the lives they intended to save were those that wouldn't be allowed to be hospitalized because if we don't flatten the curve, we're gonna overwhelm our healthcare system. The data in Wisconsin has indicated that we never had a curve to flatten the demands never were there. Our hospital association has says we've always had an abundance of hospital beds, ICU beds, respirators available. Further, when we talk about flattening the curve, I believe there's misinformation out there in the public. They think that the safer at home order is intended to save lives. Well, by public health's own definition, the goal of the safer at home order was to delay the infections, the cases, the hospitalizations, and the deaths. It was never to decrease the number of cases, the number of hospitalizations, and the number of deaths. They still expect the total number will not change. Safer at Home was intended to delay the, those infections so that we didn't overwhelm our healthcare system. 
Again, our hospital association tells us in Wisconsin that our system has never been close to being overwhelmed. So I've questioned why did we need the safer at home order when it was never a risk? Why would we now talk about extending the safer at home order when we know that there is no curve to flatten? So another reason why uh, the response has been mentioned that this was necessary for the COVID virus is we've heard from a lot of public health officials that the death rate is so much more severe for COVID-19 than other viruses like influenza virus. Well, I, as a scientist and an experienced epidemiologist, I have a concern about the term death rate being used because typically that number is used to refer to the number of deaths versus the number of cases, the number of people that got infected. Well, this early on in any kind of an incident, we're never going to know how many people were infected. We have a really low number of surveillance. Very few people have been tested. So a year from now, or a year and a half from now, we're going to have better data. We're going to know more about who may have been infected, and then we can start talking about death rate. Right now, all we really have are the deaths. And so we have a system where when, when deaths occur to a certain disease, the physician fills out the, health, the death certificate to identify how that death occurred. What's interesting about the deaths related to COVID-19 is the CDC also changed the guidelines on April 8th that they issued to physicians expanding the cases that could be coded to COVID-19. If someone dies for severe respiratory distress, that could be coded as a COVID-19 death. So we really don't know now which deaths really are attributable to COVID-19. So public health has stated that we needed to take these measures due to the models that they were following. Well, I have some questions about the models. Acting DHS Department of Health Services Secretary Andrea Palm said that in Wisconsin, if we don't take action by April 8th, we could see up to 22,000 cases and up to 1,500 deaths in Wisconsin. The real numbers on April 8th were 2,885 cases and 111 deaths. Now those aren't close. Those are exponentially wrong. Nationally, Dr. Fauci stated that we could have as many as 2.2 million deaths in the United States. Two weeks later, he lowered that number and said, well, it might only be 240 to 400,000 deaths. And less than a week later, he stated, it looks like we're gonna have less than 60,000 deaths in the United States. Now, how can models be so wrong, yet those are determining what our public health officials are using to create this type of response? When we are telling the public that these kind of deaths, these kind of infections are going to occur, and they don't, well, why are we doubling down and now extending the orders rather than considering opening Wisconsin back up? Again, we want to remember the stated reason for the Safer at Home order was to delay cases, hospitalizations, and deaths so that we didn't overwhelm our healthcare system. And that fact would save lives because people that were sick would get the hospitalization they needed. Since these models were completely wrong, they've been proven to be wrong, they were always flat in Wisconsin, our healthcare system was never overwhelmed, what is the purpose for extending the stay-at-home order when we know whenever it goes off, whether it's now, whether it's later in the summer, whether it's in the fall, the virus will still be there. We're still gonna have cases, we're still gonna have hospitalizations, and we're still gonna have deaths. So if the purpose is not to overwhelm our health system, we've proven our health system is not overwhelmed. So I've also heard some discussion that if we could just have a vaccine, we could make this virus go away. Well, here's where I really have expertise. In the swine industry, we've been trying to develop vaccines for coronaviruses for over three decades with little or no success. It's been very difficult to develop a vaccine against the coronavirus. There's a lot of science behind that, but I don't think that we want to hang our hat on putting people back to work and, and getting Wisconsin working again on a vaccine. 
we need to figure out a way to develop immunity safely in the majority of the population while protecting our at-risk population. We know the elderly, we know those with uh, underlying health conditions are very at risk to this COVID-19 virus. But in general, the facts have been that it's very low risk to the majority of the population. So perhaps a method might be to start putting Wisconsin back to work, start developing that immunity. I'd also like to talk about is Safer at Home actually working? The Department of Health Services has a flyer on their website called Safer at Home. Yes, it's working. Well, this chart has a, has a graph and it talks about where we might have been without Safer at Home. And this chart shows that without the Safer at Home order on March 29th, we could have had 10,000 COVID-19 cases. Now I would ask Acting Secretary Andrea Palm how her message has changed so rapidly from when she issued the order on March 24th. She was back on video on March 27th stating that the Safer at Home order issued on March 24th will not change the curve prior to April 8th and we are still likely to have up to 22,000 cases and up to 1,500 deaths by April 8th. Well, now they have a chart that says we could have had 10,000 cases by March 29th, only five days into the Safer at Home order being issued. I would like to ask public health, how can a Safer at Home order take a chart from 10,000 down to about 1,000 when it was only in effect five days? That does not make any biological sense. Those people would have already been infected. Those cases would have already been being tested. There's no way that in five days, a safer at home order could reduce that chart from 10,000 down to 1,000. I would also like to ask public health why on that same chart, on April 11th, they state that we currently have 4,000 cases in Wisconsin when the facts reported on DHS website is that there were 3,068 cases, almost 1,000 fewer cases. Is this chart intending to mislead the public? Because the fact is that curve on the bottom is a pretty straight curve. Definitely cases are increasing, but there's no real indication when I look at that on how did Safer at Home really change the chart because it was always low. So this chart is very confusing to me and I think it's misleading to the public and I would like to have public health explain to me how this happened and why we still have a chart on there that is not demonstrating facts. So let me just summarize some of the things that we've gone over today. The initial goal from public health was to flatten the curve. In Wisconsin, our curve has always been flat. That has not been an issue. Our health system has not been at risk of being overwhelmed. The death rate is a number that gets used a lot. The death rate due to COVID-19, we simply don't have enough data to validate that number. We can't say today if the death rate due to COVID-19 is high or low or the same as influenza. We just don't have the data. We know that the models that public health has been using to determine how we should move forward and what kind of action should be taken are wrong. The models have never been close to predicting cases, hospitalizations, or deaths. The final question is, is Safer at Home really working? And if it's working, what is it working to accomplish? The stated goal was that we need to issue Safer at Home so we can flatten the curve and not overwhelm our health system. As I've stated multiple times, we have no risk of overwhelming our health system in Wisconsin. So finally, I'd like to just state, the science does not support extending this safer at home order through May 26th.